zombies. They truly are the J.K. Simmons of bad guys. If they had their own internet movie database entry, it'd just be a single picture of a Mobius strip, each one starring in their own game called Slower, Zombie Number One, or Zombie That Explodes, Falls in Love, and then Turns Into Green Smoke Number Four. And I get that, and I feel the same way you do. So when World War Z, the game was announced, I thought to myself, hey, maybe this is the airplane flying variant, and we can have some zombie airplane dogfighting antics going on. That was probably asking too much, but let's see what it is. If you've made it this far, you're at ACG and I'm Carrick, and it's my continuing job to bring you reviews that aren't two minutes long or filled with sponsored bullcrap. World War Z, a third-person horde-based shooter in the same genre that made classics like Left 4 Dead a nerd household name. We're here the zombies are not only fast like freaks, but somehow figured out to build human pyramids like they're all failed cheerleaders. And leaping from the top, hoping they might land in a spot close enough to you to take out the good guys by opening their mouth as they scream on by. World War Z is by Saber Interactive and published by Focus Interactive. It's out on the 16th for PC on the Epic Store and on PS4 and Xbox for the price of $34.99 and $40 respectively. Let's see how it did, shall we? As always, if you like the video, eh, maybe subscribe. So here's my review for World War Z. Bubble wrap gun sounds, AI saviors, and the realistic fact that no one runs away from grenades. Graphics are up first. This is surprisingly better than I anticipated by a good amount, while not interposing the moody confines of neglected villages and mystical locations like, say, the Vermintide series with its rustic medieval gone wrong kind of artistic fantasy style. World War Z does some sound work with its own space, though, with a fallen world right after the zombie plague is spread, with each location offering a unique feeling throughout. From the doom graffiti spread around in the not-so-abandoned subways of some forgotten burg and fighting off a zombie zerg rush as you try to gain access to the next location, or working across the docks of Tokyo trying to escape by boat, because as we all know, that worked out perfectly well for the folks at the end of the Dawn of the Dead remake. It looks very good. Locations are nicely packed out with debris and an architecture that does its best not to give you the four flat edges look many games have. While Tokyo, I would say, is both the strongest looking and weakest of the bunch of locations with its sedate and cultured homes and unique color scheme and just setup, also hiding a larger number of structural dead ends that the other levels didn't always have in that high of a number. Each one also has some kind of environmental effects with the verticality and vision blocking architecture of Tokyo causing you to constantly crane your neck for a bunch of dead people trying to do their best version of a flying squirrel onto your head, all the way to the snowbank ridden locations in Moscow, to the dirt and sands of Jerusalem right after the worst week it's ever had environmentally. World War Z is not amazing, but it does hold up really nicely in this genre. I wouldn't say the levels are incredibly complex, and most do hinge on objectives that range from go to this touchpad and enter a key combination, or go to this power breaker and switch it on. They at least offer a good amount of horizontal and vertical gameplay space to keep the flow going and keep you always guessing where enemies are going to come from. In fact, with the huge number of zombies, I wasn't sure what to expect, but the first time a horde came piss-tearing through the back end of a Japanese maple garden into our team, obviously starving for the last human biscuit, it actually looks really good with many animations playing out for them, tripping and falling all over themselves or rolling around as they try to take corners too fast, leap off and around cars and so forth. It really does look pretty good, and with the sheer number of zombies involved, the game up close looks better than I thought with satisfying snarls of primal bloodlust curling up on faces of the enemies as they get close. Also, collision detection is handled a bit differently here with some tricks. For instance, it's a bit less model-based and a bit more about the enemies having a zone that they won't pass through if another enemy is close, but that can get overridden at times, and so occasionally you have that moment where you have three zombies who seem to have merged into a flesh-eating Shiva, arms and fingers ripping and grabbing and slashing. But it's not as obvious as you would expect or as we've seen in other games. And the Horde technology itself does work very well with what seems like thousands of them pop them together in a river of uneasy living undead maple syrup and just spilling out of rooms and off the side of buildings like they're all in a desperate bid to see which one of them can wear your friggin' face around in a poorly planned Hannibal Lecter escape. And yes, you will see that procedural generation pop up, which means the same cavalcade of 15 rednecks running at you, all of them seeming to look like they had just shopped at Nordstrom's right when everything went to shit and then ended up running through downtown Moscow. Now, this can also lead to a couple issues as well. First, sometimes the zombie hordes do seem to make sense when they come tear ass and down the paved buffet lines of some street in New York. But then other times, you're going to be neck deep in a subway and they sort of sprint down into your play level from a room you know that's pretty much gated off, as if they politely open the door, let a thousand slathering beasts in, and then in the most polite action ever, they lock the door up tight again. 
It's also noticeable in some levels too when zombies just erupt from the top of the buildings like a fondue volcano with them just shooting out mobile magmas. They land and then sprinting down the sides of the buildings after you. This is a small quibble, but it is noticeable, especially as we've seen this excellence in other titles sort of go away from this. For example, the climbing, creeping areas in Vermintide. We do see that here. It's just not as often. Also, when you're playing, you're probably going to notice that a lot of the explosions are more sound than they are overall visual. It doesn't mean they don't look visually impactful. It's just you can sort of tell that most likely to keep those FPS solid, they were doing some changes to the way those look. Lastly, some of the locations can look a little bit funky. For instance, Moscow with its frozen out wintered locations that for some reason seem to have got about 10 times more snow than normal just because the zombies attack like they were all friggin weather wizards before they died. It's done for dramatic effect though, and to me, honestly, it was pretty much fine. Lastly, the game does remove dead bodies really fast, so it's possible to occasionally see an outpouring of zombies from the sky like God just sort of poured them out and said, you know what, I don't like any of you, and then many of them disappear. For a game of this scope and budget, I still think it's really impressive. Also, a kudo. I absolutely love that they give every location different characters you can be, and they're not just the same couple jet setters, somehow Elon Musk and around the world and their own personal rocket saving the day. So, for example, in Tokyo or Moscow, you have different choices for the character models. This helps a great deal to break up some of the visual monotony that might have otherwise set in. Now, when it comes to options graphically, the game does not have a ton. Anti-aliasing, resolution scaling, and others, which is always nice, and a couple more. Sadly, many of them do fall into the bucket list kind of situation where something called effects changes the settings of like six things, making adjusting the game perfectly to your system a bit difficult. And of course, speaking of effects, that brings us to performance. And I gotta say, it's actually also surprisingly good. On the console, sadly, you are looking at 30 FPS, a 900p resolution on the Xbox and PS4 running at 1080p. Surprisingly enough, the FPS is very solid for all the platforms, with the Pro versions, unfortunately though, not getting 60 FPS modes, but getting higher resolution. On the PC though, World War Z runs insanely well. On a 4780 and a 980 Ti, 1080p with all the settings on Ultra resulting in the lowest FPS of 85 and highs in the hundreds with current drivers. And of course, you have the ability to crank that resolution up or down. On a current i7 at 4.9 with a 2080 Ti, 4K with the lowest FPS of 80 and highs in the 150s was absolutely possible, all settings on Ultra as well. The performance really is rock solid, I have to say that. This is with DirectX though. Things are a little odd with Vulkan, which it allows you to switch to, with lower FPSs pretty much all around at this time. Not a huge amount, but the implementation did not seem rock solid. There were some issues here and there, like some low quality textures on cars and elsewhere, but World War Z does an impressive amount, almost surprisingly so, on the PC, and even on the console keeps a much steadier frame rate than many other games that do far less, and especially when they're throwing these incredible numbers of enemies your way. And that brings us to sound, music, and voice. Good. I don't trust this psycho. Roy! Roy, open up! Open the door, you twat! Roy! We're stuck here until we get the key. Didn't find a key on this guy. And we're going to do uh, music first. So I would say, while this is generic to an almost extreme level, I would be lying if I didn't say it didn't really fit the mood. There's some moody acoustics and echoing, some solo strings hiding in wait every time you walk down a solitary street. Then it builds up with this drum flourish and a discordant shifting guitar sample and odd warbles that offer excellent, almost discomforting atmosphere to a lot of the battles and locations. While it doesn't elevate in terms of the arrangements themselves or uniqueness, there's sometimes to me a mastery in timing and mood that crops up, and especially here that you begin to notice. And most settings, yes, they're not really reflected in their scores. They didn't really have any connection thematically overall. It was just good music with a couple audio options as well for dynamic range. 
I did notice that the layering and direction information offered by the game was very good, which does help trying to identify where a horde's coming from if you're playing with the HUD off or if it's just really busy on screen. And when it comes to what's happening on screen, that'll bring us to sound. And a little bit like the accuracy of the game's shotguns, this is a bit hit and miss. First, we're going to cover the good parts. There are a few things more satisfying than this airy thump of a grenade going off in this game, turning a zombie horde into a bunch of poorly planned fireworks into the sky, body parts flying around with full delimbing effects at play at all times. That is glorious, and a number of weapons do just that, from the crossbow dynamite combo to grenade launchers, rocket launchers, as well as just the plain grenades themselves. Very well done. Machine guns run from sounding excellent with a nice report to being a bit on the weak side and to keep the stealth element, really anything with a silencer sounds like someone ordered something from Amazon then just Lord of the Dance across the bubble wrap from the delivery box. While I didn't necessarily like that, I did like the nice sound implementation they have of the acoustics when in or outside of buildings with the reports amplifying when you sprint into a location and everything becoming this nice tight cacophony of gunpowder reaching ignition and bodies flying around or slashing a machete through some chick in a flower dress and her arm flies off and hits the bus and you actually hear the thud sound. Sadly, it's also rife with audio bugs. First, when the going gets incredibly busy here, many times guns will just stop making sounds. Not all the time, but in the busier moments. When auto cannons are set up and mortars are going off and you're gonna notice that some guns just stop making sound at all, like the audio buffer's full and just decided to take a nap and sleep it off. You can feel like you might be out of bullets for a second, especially with so much going on around you before you realize it's just that audio bug. It doesn't happen all the time, but pretty much everybody I've talked to and everybody I played with did have that problem. As a package, it is pretty good with some excellent processing and gun sounds mixed in with a couple questionable ones and unfortunately, those bugs. And that brings us to voice. Ignoring a couple of the accents, I would say mostly this is hit rather than miss. It's not bad. One of the excellent parts here though is that the AI is in a constant chatter mode informing you of enemies coming or major semi-bosses showing up and new threats always attacking. It's done very well overall and everyone from every location has their own little things they discuss during the downtimes as you go about searching for items and locations you've cleared out. I really do like the amount of audio information you get in this game, whether it be the sound or hear in the voice. I would say, while not outstanding, it wasn't bad at all. And that brings us to gameplay and a bit about the story. You play as different series of fighters from different locations as the world has seen the zombie menace ravage throughout the land. The story elements portraying each group in each location are different, either trying to escape it or trying to stop the horde with some ultimate super weapon or virus in the last level. It's a four-person team-based shooter with each player able to choose a class prior to starting any level. One of six, Gunslinger, Hellraiser, Medic, Fixer, Slasher, and Exterminator. Now, each starts with their own unique loadout. And as you level up as you go, it allows you to unlock up to 30 skills as you go with those experience points. Each set of skills is in blocks of nine with three columns, and you can have one of each column lit up and usable, which does require a specific level as well for some of the later skills to be unlocked. You can switch classes between levels as well. What that does is it allows a lot of variability even if two people are sharing a class. While much of it is not really a surprise, the way the game plays and the amount of weapons you can get, there's 18 normal ones, as well as 110 purchasable variants for them. There's this interplay of moments of sheer action with downtime mixed with skills. Hordes are handled dynamically, based on time and noise you make, with each horde having its own normal basic zombie-style bad guy that's easy bullet fodder, but does some serious damage up close, as well as biotoxin zombies that have to be killed in the right way, otherwise they release gas, or screamers that if not killed keep calling more zombies, all stuff we've seen before. As you're taking them out, you're constantly finding secrets like breach charges. These are items that can be used to open locations where more weapons, both normal and special, might be hiding out, as well as always being on the lookout for environmental ways to kill zombies, like shooting ceiling pieces to kill large numbers of them, or tropish red barrels, of course, filled with gas that someone for some reason thought wouldn't be worth taking with them. The gunplay here, I have to say, really does work. Every gun has just about the right amount of recoil, if a bit on the low side, but I would say for a game like this, that's sort of expected. You have to keep a watchful eye on your own health as well as your partner's, and that's vital because losing one of you means that square of defense starts to collapse really quickly, and the game has no problem sending enemies tumbling through skylights or climbing over barricades to get at you. Since each team member has very unique skills and strengths as well, it can be the end of a team very quickly on the higher difficulties if you are not really careful of the status of the other players. And that synergy continues because the weapons 
upgrades are not the low level IQ upgrades we expect that you get a plus one to damage, which can't really be felt in a game like this anyway. I mean, in World War Z, most guns do enough damage already to separate the enemies into so many body parts. You'd need to order one of those special build instructions from a Lego construction website to put them back together. Instead, there are things like starting out with different guns, items that help everyone on the team when you use them or otherwise. What's intriguing here is that the switch up to a more powerful weapon, for instance, may indicate switching away from the original starting silenced handgun, which is powerful all by itself, trading damage for alerting the enemy. And trust me, stealth works in the game. A silent team can get deep into a level much easier than a loud one, popping off enemy heads like twisty tops and well-placed silenced weapon shots or machete strikes working incredibly well. However, of course, you may not be getting as many experience points that way if you skip some of them. Now, as you guys know, I test every difficulty on a game, all the way from the easiest who think that zombies are just stinky people who try to give you hugs all the time to the hard difficulty where mortality is as fragile as alliances in Game of Thrones. They did a really good job here as well, spreading out the ability to choose difficulties where friendly fire actually starts to climb up dangerously high, as well as the number of times that you can be knocked down before you're fully dead with your own body rising slowly from its dead state to an undead state to take out your prior friends. And I love that. And on the hardest difficulty, friendly fire is very heavy and items are sporadically placed out in the world and the horde are relentless. With five difficulties, that's really awesome and it lets everyone from various skill levels enjoy the game. But yes, there are some problems in the game. The first is the AI is awesome if teamed up with more than one other player. For example, two people and two AI, those AI do a great job taking out enemies and helping out in all the bad spots. Sadly, they seem woefully uncaring of the other AI friends, meaning I've seen one AI stand and watch another AI just get absolutely gutter sniped by a bruiser over and over and over and over again. And his ambivalence towards it all makes you think that there's some kind of past relationship there that hasn't been explained. Then I got knocked down and suddenly he was all action. It's an odd and noticeable flaw that I'd like to see fixed. Also, while they can shoot and scoot and heal you like Doogie Hauser, don't expect them to know how to flip switches, open doors, or help with any of the mission objectives, which can be a bitch in scattered groups. I beat all the levels with a mix of human players, human players and AI, and AI alone, though not on that hardest difficulty in the last one as they refuse to help each other very often, and they are still some of the better AI overall in a game like this. You just have to sort of plan around them generally hating each other. When it comes to the length, the game isn't super long if you play it on the easiest difficulty, but I would say that is a cakewalk. Once you stop and turn that difficulty up, even just to normal, it climbs. And on the hardest, it can be an excellent trade-off of speed versus lifespan, which I dug. And of course, games like this have never been about levels overall, but leveling up. And that's going to take you a hell of a lot longer as all the weapons have their own experience bars, and of course, you do have to buy those variants. Now, while all that is co-op mode with four players online and offline with bots, multiplayer is four by four with both teams fighting for objectives while swarms come at them. And they have their own classes, each with their own starting loadouts and a smaller list of separate, more PVP-based skills, which adds a ton of replay, and that is something I actually wasn't expecting. As a package, World War Z offers an excellent assortment of engagements, some pretty good ideas. I like a lot of the weapons in it. It's got a fun leveling system. The Horde-style zombies are interesting. There's some unique moments. It is held down by no real bosses, though, but I'm not under, really 100% sure how they would do that. I would have liked to have seen one or two. Fun factor. It's a blast. There are issues and you will notice them, but at the same time, the difficulty setting, the skills, the gun levels, the various classes, the changes in the multiplayer versus the normal game really do add up. There's a ton to enjoy here for the price, and it's a blast to grab an auto shotgun and just waste hundreds of zombies crawling up the side of a building and then realizing suddenly that they're also pouring in through the roof as well. Their desire to get to you probably far higher than their own need to live. But speaking of need to live, it is held back by that AI, and I would have liked a little bit more level design work on a couple of the locations. And that gets us to the review score itself. I review games on a buy, wait for sale, rent, or never touch it again rating scale, with rent being replaced by deep, deep sale on PC titles, if that ends up being the score. At this price, 35 bucks if you get it PC, 40 bucks, which is a slightly budget price if you get it on the consoles. I actually have to say, this is a buy. There are a couple great entries into this category that you could be playing, but some of us have played them to death. That's why it's called a genre, not the Left 4 Dead is the only game allowed to be in this genre, genre. Many titles offer unique elements, and World War Z does it as well, even if it stumbles occasionally. So anyway, that's it for me. I hope you guys liked the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. 
Maybe check out Reddit, Twitter, or Facebook. And of course, you can become a patron on my Patreon website, which allows you to get into some of the coolest places to talk about games, jump into the Discord. It helps me continue to give you guys reviews. And as always, I buy a game, even if the developer gives me a code for review. Peace out and enjoy the rest of your week.